Hello and welcome to the intro to the Linux Terminal Part 3. Now in the first two parts of the series we talked about navigating through the file system and just becoming familiar with the terminal. Then we talked about updating your system and just different ways that you can do that. Well today we're going to talk about the next logical step what do you do if you want to edit a file? Because inevitably, if you end up at a terminal with no sort of GUI available, you're gonna have to edit a file some way to get back into your GUI. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, so this is the third time I've actually recorded this. I've had some issues with my record my desktop and whatnot, so I'm trying FFmpeg out to see if that works any better. So basically, today we're gonna cover two different terminal commands that allow you to edit text, again, at the terminal. The first one, of course, is called Nano. It comes with pretty much every Linux distribution that I've ever used and probably that you will ever use. Uh, so if you type in N-A-N-O and hit Enter, it takes you into the Nano text editor. See here it says GNU Nano 2.2.4, new buffer. Because we haven't actually told it to open a file yet, we haven't created a file or we're not editing a file. And along the bottom, we have some commonly used commands, things that you may or may not use. The ones that are most commonly used, at least by me, are exit, write out, and read file. And I haven't even used read file all that much. But we've got our blinking cursor here where we can start typing if we're ready to do so. This is a test, period. And that actually is just a, a line of text. It's a document. If I want to save it now, I'd hit either Control O or Control X. Control O will actually write the document. Control X will check to see if what you've done has been saved or not. If not, it will prompt you to save it and then allow you to exit the program. You'll notice here the modified uh, modifier is actually up there. So when I run exit, it's going to check that modifier. If it has been modified, it will go ahead and uh, ask me to save. If not, again, we will exit. So Control X says save the modified buffer. I'll hit yes and I'll tell it to write the file name twilltest.txt. Now, if I do an ls here at the command prompt again, I've got a load of files in here, far too many, but there's my tooltest.txt. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go into a clean directory, something that doesn't have much in it, cd twiltest, and now I've just got a couple of test documents in there. So, from the command prompt, if I wanted to edit an existing document, I would just go into nano, n-a-n-o, and then the document name. So, for example, we've got two documents here. We'll just take test.txt. Sorry for my typing there. So here we've got here's some text, here's some text, all of these fun things. And these are just lines that I can, I'm moving through them using the up and the down arrows. And if I wanted to go left to right, I use either the right arrow or the left arrow. And once you've found something you want to edit, you can either add this is a, you know, just type in in front of it. You can move to the end of it and put uh, text at the end of it. Whatever you want to do, really, it's entirely up to your preference. And when you're done, of course, Control O or Control X will allow you to save your modified text file. Other than that, if you go back into Nano, if there are any other commands you want to use, for example, we've got cut and uncut text there. If I go back into this document and run the cut text command, Control K, that will remove that line. Control U means that I can put it back, and I can put it back wherever else I want to. For example, put it back there, put it back up here, just control U over and over again, and it takes that one line that's in the buffer and puts it wherever I want it. In addition, we've got previous and next page. I don't have a long enough file really for that to be a problem. I could put a lot more text in there. Control V would go to the next page. Control Y goes back a page. Not something I use terribly often. Page up, page down also works, so not terribly useful. Control T says to spell. It's actually trying to do a spell check but uh, where I'm on an Arch Linux system, I haven't set up any of that spell checking stuff yet, so not going to work here. Control C tells you the current position. You see I'm at line one of 37, I am at column one of 19, character zero of 478 total. Really just good for keeping statistics if you wanna find out how large something you're working on is. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much the majority of the t commands I would use on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm not sure why you would want to justify text, but just in case you do, Control J. We'll take everything that you've got there and justify it. If, if you want to do that, that's cool. Control U will take it back. To find some additional commands for Nano, Control G will take you into this help file. 
So here we've got our traditional commands mentioned on that main nano screen right here. As you move down, you've got meta key and forward slash or backslash to go to the first line or last line of the file. And again, lots and lots more commands here you can go through at your leisure. Just come into nano, hit control G and scroll through them with the up and down arrow, then hit control X to exit it. So when we're done editing this file, again, control, we'll do the control O this time because I haven't demonstrated it yet. Control O will write it. Oh, one thing I did forget to mention, where is? Control W says where is. If I type in test, capital T-E-S-T, -E and hit enter, we've got the option here to replace it. We've got the option to go to the line. We've got beginning of paragraph, uh, all of these different things that we can do. We can even do regular expression to replace whatever we want to using case sensitivity, all sorts of searching options. I traditionally just do searching with control W and then enter. It found the first instance of test, control W, enter would find the next one, and so on and so forth. Just throwing that out there, if you want to use it, you're more than welcome to. It's a very handy command for searching through large files. But then control O writes the document, enter will actually write it with that name, control X to exit. So that's pretty much a quick, quick intro to the com nano command. Now let's take a look at VIM. I would say VI, but VIM is just an improved version that's a whole lot easier to use. You see here it gives you some, some commands that you can use to get started. You can do colon help sponsor to get the information on it. You can do just colon help to get online help. Or you can do version to get version information. Or colon Q to quit. That's the thing that a lot of people do have trouble with is you get into VI somehow and you don't know how to get out. So by default we're sitting here looking at the VI screen, we don't have anything typed in, and if I start typing, just typing numbers in, you'll notice the clicking but nothing's actually happening. Now to end up being able to type, you have to press the I key first to go to insert mode. You'll notice the bottom left hand corner now says insert. On the right it's got my position, line 0, column 1, and now if I start typing, this is a test, it just types in whatever I give it. When you're done with that, you hit the escape key to go back to command mode. So I'm not able to type anymore. You see hitting the letters again, nothing's happening. So now that I'm done editing my document, if I hit the colon, which is shift and semicolon, if you didn't know, that will take me to the command entry screen. And this is where I would put Q for quit. Now I've made a change to the document, so it's not going to let me leave it without saving it or forcing it to let me out. So do the colon again and I can either do W quit to write the document and then quit and give it a file name such as test doc dot text that will actually leave the document and then if I do a list directory here's test doc dot text the alternative would be to go to VIM insert test text escape to get back to command mode and then colon Q exclamation point will force it to let me out immediately without saving anything that I've done. So if you've accidentally made a change to a file you didn't mean to, uh, something that's local and you've just made a bunch of changes and didn't mean to do it there, Q exclamation point will let you out of it. In addition, if you go back into Vim and like I said before, hit colon H-E-L-P for help, this gives you a whole list of uh, information on help using Vim all of the different commands that you can use. It's not a comprehensive list, I'm sure, but there are a load of things that are available, things that you can go into. I'll also have a link to a document in the description below that you can look at all of the commands for Vim. There are so many of them that it's terribly difficult to remember them for me. I remember just a couple that are make it a little easier for me to get around, such as colon Q to leave whatever document you're in, colon Q again to leave the program. Now what good is a text editor at a command line if you're not actually able to edit any documents that are outside of your home directory? Yeah, I hadn't mentioned that before. The only documents you're able to edit by default are the ones in your home directory. The ones that you've created are the ones that are associated with your user account. So if you wanted to edit something that's not in your home directory, for example, let's say where I'm on Arch Linux, if I wanted to edit my Pac-Man configuration file, Pac-Man being the package manager, doesn't really matter. If I wanted to do that, I could type in nano slash etc slash pacman.conf. Now what will happen when I do this? Here's my configuration file. It however says no write permission. That means that I can't do anything to this file. So if I changed it to say this is a test and tried to exit and save it, it's going to say error writing this file permission denied. 
Now, if I have to leave it now, and if I want to, I can come back into it using the sudo command like we talked about in the last video. sudo nano at etc pacman conf will ask me for my user password. And now I'm in this document and I actually do have the ability to make changes. Changes. And then I hit control X, hit yes to save, enter, and there we go, it made those changes for me. Likewise, the same thing can be done using VI. Instead of using nano in that command, you would just replace it with VI or VIM, and then go back into the document, make whatever changes you want, colon Q or colon WQ to quit, and then you're done. Same way if you did vim slash etc slash pacman dot conf without the sudo in front of it, it's just not going to let you make any changes to it. Insert is going to say changing a read only file, meaning you can't actually make any changes and write them out. So realistically, that's a very quick, very, very quick intro to using text editors at a command prompt in Linux. If you have any questions on this, let me know in the comment section below. If you have any suggestions for future terminal videos, please let me know in the comments below also. I do have several more things planned for this, but this is just a very quick intro to it, and I thought I'm taking it one step at a time. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time.